Many Diels alder reactions are characterized by the possibility of the formation of multiple diastereomers. For example, if we think about the combination of this diene with this dienophile, a transition state in which the cyano group assumes an endo orientation would give rise to this product in which we form two new stereocenters and the substituents on the diene and dienophile, the alkoxy or OR group and the cyano group, are oriented in a cis orientation. And this fits the rule that we saw in the previous video with the out group and the endo group cis. However, if we imagine flipping over the dienophile so that the cyano group now assumes an exo orientation and a hydrogen assumes the endo orientation, here in the above case, the hydrogen linked to that carbon bearing the cyano group was in an exo orientation. If we think about this transition state and the resulting product, now with the cyano group exo, we end up with a diastereomer of the first product with the alkoxy and cyano groups in a trans stereochemical relationship there. These two products are diastereomers. They're not mere images, but they are stereoisomers in the sense of having identical connectivity. And because they're diastereomers and have different energies and the transition states leading to them then would be diastereomeric and have different energies, we should expect one to be favored over the other. And so the question then here is, Basically, which transition state is lower in energy is one way to put it. The transition state in which the cyano group is in an endo orientation, which is the first one we looked at, or the transition state in which the cyano group is in an exo orientation, which is what we're thinking about here in the second case. An empirical rule developed over the years as the Diels-Alder reaction was studied and applied in a huge number of cases called the endo rule tells us the favored product. The endo rule states that products derived from the endo approach of substituents on the dienophile tend to be favored over those in which the substituent is oriented in an exo position, which would give rise to what we call exo products. So endo products tend to be favored in deals all the reactions over exo products. In this particular case, this means that the top product would be the major product, and the bottom product derived from exo orientation of the cyano group would be the minor product. Now, to explain this, we can think about orbital interactions between the substituent and the diene itself. These interactions don't directly involve the carbons that are bonding in the diene and dienophile because they're sort of peripheral to the actual chemical change that's going on, but they do still exert an influence on the stability of the transition state. We call them secondary orbital interactions. And these exist in the endo transition state but not in the exotransition state. And I want to demonstrate that now by drawing out the two possible transition states. So let's begin just by drawing two copies of the diene. Since we're not going to really mess with the diene in this analysis, we're just going to change how the dienophile is oriented. And I'm going to draw the diene in an orientation where its plane is kind of perpendicular to the screen, and it's in the S-cis conformation that's required for the Diels-Alder reaction. So we'll draw the diene the same in both the endo and the exo transition states. The difference between these two transition states really lies in how the dienophile is oriented. In the endo transition state, the cyano group is very much underneath the diene in a position something like this, and there's a hydrogen that's in an exo position. And just for completeness, I'll draw out the other two hydrogens on the other carbon of the dienophile down here. In the exo transition state, we flip over the dienophile like a pancake so that now there's a hydrogen in the endo position and the cyano group is located in an exo position. And here again, we have these two hydrogens in endo and exo positions on the other carbon of the dienophile. The key difference between these transition states really lies in the position of the cyano group. And what makes the endo transition state remarkable and what gives it its stability are the pi type interactions between the pi orbitals of the cyano group and the pi orbitals of the diene. These interactions are absent from the exo transition state. And let's draw some pictures to show that in a little more detail. Let's start with the exo transition state. So there are pi orbitals, pi bonding and pi antibonding orbitals associated with the cyano group. And just to keep things kind of general, we can just think about the p orbitals oriented perpendicular to the plane of the dienophile for this analysis. And we're not going to worry so much about phase and that kind of thing. We're just going to say, you know what, there are some pi-type orbitals in the cyano group here. In the exo-transition state, the pi-type orbitals of the cyano group are relatively far 
from the pi type orbitals of the diene. And there's very little, if any, overlap between p orbitals associated with the diene carbons and p orbitals associated with the cyano group. This means there are essentially no secondary orbital interactions in the exotransition state with these orbitals far from one another. If we turn our attention now to the endotransition state, the situation is very different. Now the pi orbitals of the cyano group are located very much in the vicinity of the pi orbitals of the diene, and this results in some relatively strong orbital overlap in the transition state between these pi type orbitals of the diene and the cyano group of the dienophile. So let me draw that out. Essentially here I just flip the phase just to illustrate positive net overlap between the two types of orbitals. The point being that the orbitals interpenetrate really in the endotransition state in a way that they can't in the exotransition state. And it's the presence of these orbital interactions that really stabilizes the endotransition state relative to the exotransition state. There's some electron delocalization going on between the cyano group and the diene. And this is particularly true when one of the reactants is electron poor and the other is electron rich, right? We could imagine, you know, without drawing any curved arrows or thinking about things in terms of concrete electrons being pushed, we could imagine some electron flow happening maybe in a quantum mechanical sense from the nucleophile to the electrophile in this direction, mediated by or really through these pi type interactions between the, the pi orbitals in the diene and the cyano group. That results in stabilization, and it explains why the endo product here is the major product. Now, because this effect relies on the overlap of p orbitals, it is strongest when the substituent contains either a non bonding lone pair or some kind of pi containing functionality, a double or triple bond. And so the endo rule is most robust for substituents that are resonance donating or withdrawing groups, things like an atom with a lone pair that we can think of as occupying a p orbital, or a substituent with two atoms x and y connected by a double or triple bond. These are kind of our general patterns for donating withdrawing groups. And I mention that because in cases where you have relatively complex dienophiles, for example, things with alkyl groups, you know, a, a methyl along with, say, a trans carbonyl. Um, we still have this question of which group goes endo, and using the idea that the endo rule really applies most strongly to pi-containing or p-orbital-containing substituents, we can conclude, for example, that in this substrate, the ester containing the carbonyl group will go endo, and the methyl group then, by necessity, will go exo. So by combining the endo rule with the stereospecificity rules that we looked at on the last slide, we can draw the major diastereomer of any Diels-Alder reaction given the reactants, which is a pretty powerful tool synthetically. It allows us to make deep predictions about the nature of this fairly complex product, starting from much simpler reactants, lacking two of the sigma bonds that we see in the product and lacking the ring structure.